Hello, everyone, and welcome to TAG Tech Start Live. I'm Larry Williams, President and CEO of TAG, and I'm pleased to bring you another edition of this week's weekly podcast featuring our technology community's best and brightest leaders. This podcast is all about showcasing what makes Georgia the number one place to do business and shining a spotlight on the Georgia technology companies that are helping lead the way in innovations across our many key industry sectors. Uh, and we're bringing a lot of the stories today about how our technology community and our great TAG members are helping uh, to manage and help to solve and even cure this current public health crisis, um, but mainly how we can really manage through it. So we're very proud of our TAG members and our technology community. Uh, I'm joined today by Ron Stewart, the president and CEO of PRGX. Uh, Ron was named PRGX president and uh, chief executive officer in December of 2013. Ron is also a member of the company's board of directors. Prior to joining PRGX, uh, Ron spent 30 years at Accenture. So he's just seen a lot of that uh, evolution and how Accenture has grown. And he's always been uh, uh, involved in the executive positions and um, in the executive leadership. So PRGX is headquartered here at Atlanta. Uh, PRGX is a global leader in recovery audit and spend analytics services. So we really look forward to learning more. Uh, Ron, welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Good to be here, Larry. Right. Ron, could you just give us a quick overview on PRGX? Absolutely. So PRGX is actually, uh, has been around for 50 years uh, and uh, based in uh, here in Atlanta. Uh, we, uh, we work with very uh, large complex organizations. 75% uh, of the world's largest retailers are, are our clients. We have about a third of the largest companies in the, in the Fortune 500. And we work in, uh, in, in spin analytics and spin data. We uh, aggregate uh, you know, enterprise spin uh, across, the, uh, across the company. And we identify uh, payment and billing discrepancies and we recover working capital uh, on behalf of our clients. Uh, we generate about 1.4 billion a year in, uh, in, in recoveries for our clients. Wow, that's real money. Uh, um, it, it gets to be, yeah. Yeah, and so that's uh, money they might have walked away from, uh, which is always important uh, to recover that. It's great for the cash flow as well as for the balance sheet at the end of the year, right? Right, absolutely. So, Ron, I know that y'all do cover, and you mentioned it, uh, a broad base of, of industries and right. businesses within them. And I think, um, I think you do uh, large businesses as well as small. But talk to us a little bit more about the industries that you serve. Absolutely. Uh, maybe well, the different our, services that you provide them. Okay. Uh, our, our largest industry is retail. And Recovery Audit really started in the retail industry. Uh, you know, way back then, uh, with the, with rubber fingers, finding duplicate payments or billing errors, uh, you know, working with many retailers. Uh, and today, it's a, it's highly uh, technology driven. Uh, we we uh, serve, like I said before, seventy five percent of the largest retailers uh, and e commerce uh, providers. Um, and and we get massive amounts of data, all the point of sale data, all the uh, the receiving data, all the movement data, and uh, you know, for the most part, we're finding either uh, payment discrepancies with duplicate payments or unapplied statement credits, or uh, we're going up uh, looking at uh, deals or between uh, CPG companies and grocers, for example, uh, and we verify these uh, merchandising agreements to verify that everything was executed properly. So, uh, and that's our biggest industry. Uh, then we have uh, the non-retail, which we call commercial, includes a, a large number of clients, energy, technology, uh, telecommunications, manufacturing, consumer goods, pharmaceutical companies. These are all companies that we'd be working with in the commercial segment. And again, we're looking for payment discrepancies, billing errors, uh, a lot of work in contract compliance, uh, direct spend and indirect spend. Talk to us a little bit about how, you know, your industry and your company has evolved with technology. Say 50 years in the business, 
looking at this, I imagine it's really evolved from a very manual process. Oh yeah. Uh, to uh, yeah, very fine. digitized. And so talk about some of the technologies. I imagine there's some, uh, the great data science, some analytics, maybe some machine learning going on in there. So yeah, talk about the evolution of your business. Yeah, and, and, and you're absolutely right. Uh, in the early days, it was going through boxes of paper invoices and trying to find where uh, you've been billed twice or billed incorrectly. So it was a fairly manual, laborious process. And that's evolved uh, with technology over time, uh, you know, to, to you know, having it uh, automated on computers and a lot of spreadsheets, uh, you know, the advent of big data uh, processing, we surely are at the forefront of that. And, the, and the, you know, we apply artificial intelligence and machine learning. You know, we have to, we aggregate uh, and we pull about uh, 7 million unique distinctive files every year from a variety of clients and we have to process, aggregate, harmonize different data fields across the client so that uh, you know, we understand what the various uh, parts of the business are doing. And we run it through complex uh, algorithms that identify discrepancies, uh, again, using advanced technology to do that. Uh, we generate where there's a, a, a discrepancy, it may be a, a pattern that you identify that, that, uh, that would ultimately result in a and a claim, uh, and we generate claims and present them to our clients and the suppliers for our clients and have them approved. But it's it's very big data oriented, a lot of analytics to identify these discrepancies and then uh, workflow uh, technology to, to get things approved and processed. Well, $1.4 billion is certainly compelling. Um, so talk about, you know, some of these things you would think today and age, you know, companies could be able to manage through on their own. But talk about some of the more common challenges that your, um, that your customers are facing, you know, how PRGX can help them. But it's really, you know, you know, people aren't doing it on their own. Uh, what is it? What is the challenge uh, that they continue to face? And, and, uh, and that's a great question. And, and we get asked all the time, you know, we go in and we find a an error or discrepancy, you know, don't your clients just fix it and ultimately you guys aren't needed anymore. Well, we've been working for most of our clients for decades. We have some of our clients have, uh, we've, we've been with for over 40 years. So, uh, and we haven't gone away so far. And they're really, uh, the, they're, there's several fundamental uh, issues that all companies have to deal with. So first of all uh, is uh, supply chain complexity, you know, back, Back in the day, you know, supply chain was localized or vertically integrated um, versus today where you're sourcing product all over the world. And there's a constant churn with suppliers as you find new opportunities and new, new deals uh, and, a, and a vast uh, you know, difference of sophistication in these companies. Um, and, and so, you know, it's always changing, it's always moving. And you know, because of that, you know, it's, it's, it's not a, a stable supply chain environment and that creates errors. I mean, mm -hmm. in the environment we see today with the COVID-19, uh, you know, companies as, as you see, especially the grocery companies or the CPG companies are just trying to respond to the demand and you know, they're, they're churning suppliers and finding new suppliers just to react to the demand and that ultimately results in uh, discrepancies and errors that have to be ultimately reconciled. Uh, also, uh, is just the, uh, the, the proliferation of information systems that people use and the amount of data that these systems generate uh, is just astronomical. You know, it used to be in the 90s, you know, we all thought the world was gonna be either SAP or Oracle, uh, but, but with the advent of cloud and, uh, cloud computing, you know, companies have access to all kinds of solutions that they can use to uh, support their source to pay processes. And so uh, hence there's just a lot more data and a lot more systems that aren't exactly integrated and aren't always aligned and that's where uh, errors occur. Uh, and then, you know, the last thing I'd say is that, you know, just the amount of change going on and the amount of, of uh, of uh, 
you know, transactions out there, companies, uh, you know, don't have the investment in controls and control systems you know, to keep up with the constant change going on in technology. And that's where we come in. So, you know, these things aren't going away. Uh, it's going to continue to happen. And fortunately for us, you know, we, we can provide a service, a very necessary service for years to come. So Ron, you've, um, um, seen a couple of these economic downturns. I'll just use a, a broader um, phrase for now. Um, and as you know, I'm sure you've witnessed it's um, one of the things that's absolutely critical right now is how to optimize working capital during a crisis. Absolutely. Um, cash flow as well as just uh, the stockpiling of money for the um, for a rainy day or for the future. So talk to us about uh, what you're seeing people can do, what businesses in Georgia can do to optimize their working capital and, um, and then any scenarios about optimizing the cash flow. Absolutely, and it, and it is times like this uh, that, that working capital and access to cash are, are essential and we're seeing lots of companies uh, you know, have issues with that that, that uh, you know, we're glad to help with. But first of all, you know, I think, you know, the big thing for us in the world of source to pay and, and every dollar of goods and services that go uh, from a buyer to a seller, a third party relationship goes through source to pay. There's about $16 trillion to spend uh, in the global 2000, for example. And so it's a massive uh, area. And uh, but it's also a very complex area for companies because it's so pervasive across these uh, organizations. Uh, so errors do exist and leakage does exist. We see across the entire source to pay spectrum from proper sourcing and, uh, and, and then uh, discipline procurement all the way through supply chain, all the way through uh, billing and payment. But generally five to 10% of every dollar spent on goods and services is lost just due to inefficiencies and errors uh, and incomplete information, suboptimal information in the source to pay process. So it's, it's money that's in the system that gets trapped and it gets leaked. So our job is to help to identify that and to uh, help recover it and, uh, and to keep it from happening in the future. So what, what we would recommend for any company is to have an active recovery audit or at least contract compliance audit program underway. Uh, that would address all areas of spend and and doing so in a more accelerated fashion. You know, traditionally, a lot of companies look at recovery audit, you know, three, six, nine, even 12 months or longer after the transaction. And we tell our clients that, you know, rather than waiting that much, that long to find a discrepancy and to enter into some sort of a recovery, start moving that into much more of a, uh, current system, either real time or near real time uh, audit program. So that's important. Uh, I think you know the payment terms that uh, you've negotiated. You'd be surprised at how much money is left on the table by just not enforcing and executing against the agreed upon payment terms that that companies have established with their suppliers. And then also, uh, you see quite a bit of disparity across companies in terms of the, the terms that they uh, use in negotiating with their suppliers. And I think look at your industry and understand the benchmark and what is the typical term that, that uh, would be in play. Because again, that's money you're sending out the door. And if you're paying earlier than everyone else, you're putting yourself as a, at a disadvantage. I think spend analytics to, to put in you know, analytics systems to look at the amount of spend and find areas that are either that need to be sourced uh, more frequently or perhaps have a highly fragmented uh, uh, spend pattern to them. So, you know, you can learn a lot by just uh, analytics. Um, and then uh, look how you're paying suppliers. Uh, people are, you know, we see all the time very inefficient payment processes, either you know, paying too many invoices with checks at, at very low low amounts of spend versus using uh, virtual cards or uh, P cards. 
uh, those are just a few of them, but uh, you know, there are a lot of ways that, that companies can identify and capture or recapture that leakage uh, just in the current spend that they're uh, executing every year. You know, that's an impressive number, you know, uh, $16 trillion worth of spend and yeah. then five to 10 percent of inefficiency within that. That's a lot, you know, five to 10 percent of 16 trillion is a lot of money. It's a lot of money. That's a whole lot of money. Yeah. And as we think about that and put it in context to uh, COVID-19 and what we're doing now, that's an extremely important amount of money uh, for that cash flow. Going back to the cash flow and the access to capital, right. that is right there that the businesses have control over. This isn't exactly. you know, going exactly. after somebody else's or a third party form of, of capital. This is right. their capital. It's found money and uh, it's right there in front of you. So you know, we, we think that's the first place to start, get that low hanging fruit. And get it early as well. Don't wait, don't wait 12 months. Go ahead and put systems in place where you're capturing it now. Yeah, I mean, we go um, and, you know, we, we, with a good you know, audit program, you can actually start to see benefits in, you know, 30, 60, 90 days. And so it, it doesn't take long to have some benefit uh, when, you, when you do this accurately. Yeah. Well, what are some of the measures there? So if a business can accurately and consistently measure the vendor payment performance, how do you help them do that? Well, um, you know, it's, you know, again, we're capturing all the, uh, the spend and payment data across the enterprise. So we we're able to aggregate and analyze it to see where there are differences and where there are discrepancies. And you look at, you know, the performance of suppliers, you look at uh, performance of different divisions. So, you know, you can put it, you can, you know, get it boiled down to where some of the outliers are pretty quickly, but, you know, we do use, a lot of analytics, and again, you got to be able to look at the entire enterprise and pull all of it together. And there's so many different systems that most companies use. You know, getting it all into the, you know, to the common data fields and being able to compare across these various systems is is the big challenge there. But once you do, you can uh, you can pretty easily evaluate where the issues are, where the problem suppliers are or uh, perhaps as parts of the business that are performing better than others. You had talked about a global supply chain and the complexity of it before. Just really curious about just your observations. I think um, one thing that uh, has been highlighted through this process and supply chain is um, in some cases, there's been a lack of redundancy in supply chain. Uh, we've gone so tight and so lean that now mm -hmm. uh, people are actually seeing the value in some redundancy of the supply chain. Mm -hmm. Are you observing that uh, either through your clients or just in the industry in general? Yeah, we do. And um, you know, I think we're going to see a lot more of it going forward. I mean, you know, when, when you look at, you know, some of the things that we track, we track retail sales and the retail supply chain very, very closely and uh, you know, inventories, you know, going through this COVID-19 period are just decimated and companies had no, obviously, you know, no expectation of the demand that was about to hit them. And so you're seeing stockouts uh, all over the place. You're seeing, you know, the, the suppliers, uh, you know, just working feverishly to find new sources of supply. And I think that's been a big wake up call where uh, you know that the, the reliance or one or two suppliers has uh, created some real uh, issues and some lost opportunities. So I think you're going to see that, and obviously, uh, with what's going on around protectionism with with some of the around the world in certain supplies and certain commodities has uh, has impacted us. So I think you're going to see a real change in how people think about security of supply chain and think about redundancy of supply chain and control of supply chain. So uh, we expect to see uh, a lot of you know, new, uh, new procedures and new processes and new investments come out of this, uh, this COVID-19. Well, I've got to imagine that you're helping influence and provide some thought leadership into those new processes and procedures. Um, if I think about the supply chain itself, uh, just you know, one aspect that you mentioned is security of the supply chain. Mm -hmm. so people can think about security from, you know, the leakage issue that you mentioned before, but there are a lot of things where you've got to really maintain the integrity uh, mm -hmm. of a product during shipping. So everything from pharmaceuticals to food to other things that are highly sensitive. So 
Uh, how do you, do you, what do you see and how do you see uh, any trends in the, um, uh, how we manage that uh, supply chain moving forward? You know, we, uh, and, and our, our role is not, you know, necessarily moving the goods. So we're, yeah. we're tracking returns and, and, and we can, you know, provide insights and visibility into all that. But, uh, but I, no, I think in general, uh, you know, there's been a lot of, especially in the food industries, food safety and being able to be very consistent around the world of how, you know, companies can ensure the uh, safety of the product and the freshness of the product and you, and you know where it came from and you can get to the source if there is an issue. So that's been uh, emerging, but, you know, I, I think it's going to accelerate uh, significantly and, uh, you know, with technology and being able to, you know, being able to get lower in the, in the price point. And it used to be that you uh, spent a lot more uh, effort on the more high priced items than the, the lower price, but you're seeing that change. So I, I would expect to continue uh, along those lines. And then, you know, just, uh, you know, how uh, transportation works and different modes of transportation uh, that, that could be impacted in a situation like we've seen here. Again, you know, people are gonna look at alternatives and redundancy. So all those things are going to be at play. Yeah, and I got to imagine that through a lot of your recovery audit audits and spend analytics, that that uh, could help identify some of the chinks in the armor throughout this whole process. Hey, want to switch gears a little bit to Georgia? We love right. our state. We're the Technology Association of Georgia. Yeah, we're yeah. proud that we're a top five technology state. Uh, often uh, um, not recognized for the um, great benefits that we have, but Tell us about the benefits you have of having your global headquarters here in our great state. Uh, well, first of all, uh, Atlanta is a great uh, business city and uh, always has been. Uh, it's a great pool of resources. We, we uh, use a lot of technology resources. Uh, we're you know, big data analytics, data science, and we've been you know, very fortunate to, have, to be able to recruit, to retain some uh, incredible trick talent, and uh, you know, I think that's a big tribute to the, the technology education that we live around with Georgia Tech and other uh, universities here. So a good pool of resources uh, for accounting, and uh, you know, it is the fintech hub, and we're you know at the end of the day a financial technology business. So I think you know that plays well to us, and uh, we, we uh, also we we operate in 30 countries around the world. So having that airport and being able to get anywhere we need to uh, normal times, this is a little bit different today, but that's been great. So, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we think Atlanta is a perfect place for us to be headquartered and, uh, and have no plans of doing anything but stay here. Well, that's great. We're always glad to hear that. Um, so what's next? Uh, PRG actually been around 50 years. What's the next 50 look like? And what, um, and even near term, what does your crystal ball say over the next uh, 12 months? All right. So first of all, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, where we're going, I mean, we, we are uh, taking advantage of, you know, the technologies that are available. We've just gone through a, a pretty momentous uh, transformation of our technology infrastructure, starting with our our, our data technology and our data foundation to really leverage in memory, high speed, high volume, high complexity, uh, you know, data manipulation and data aggregation. So that that's making a big difference in terms of how quickly we can find things and which enables us to go to much more of a real time and even a preventative type of a service. So rather than doing a recovery, you know, six, 12 months after the fact, identify it, uh, the discrepancy before you pay the invoice or even in some cases before you enter into the transaction so that, uh, that you can avoid uh, these kind of payments. Uh, the second thing is you know, with the massive amount of data and being able to integrate analytics into the data processing, uh, being able to uh, monitor uh, leakage and monitor opportunities so that you can identify it early and stop it early. You know, those are things that we're moving to, um, you know, and, and we just see our, our whole model changing to a much more technology enabled, real time preventative 
type of a service that's uh, you know real fundamental to the operation of the company and you know trying to keep that five to ten percent of leakage from occurring in the first place so uh, very much uh, you know taking advantage of the of, of current technologies and where that's going to be leading us well Ron, let me follow up on that a little bit so um, where are you in the evolution of this I mean is it are you at or are you going to a, a point where the technology will be able to auto uh, auto correct some of the systems in real time um, and then maybe a triage of different levels that go to a human for a validation. So do you want us to correct this or not correct it? So where are you sort of on the scale of um, the data science and the analytics just being able to autocorrect uh, systems uh, within the um, data itself and within the computers itself versus the human touch that's required? Yeah, well, and, and again, you know, we, we work, uh, you know, uh, um, Alongside our clients, and you know, we're 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 not going to be in a position where we're going in and and changing a lot of their transactional systems uh, as we go. But our job is to identify it quickly and and notify the client of where that discrepancy is. Uh, so uh, much more of a notification, and uh, you know, in certain cases, it may be that uh, that will integrate into you know more active type. Uh, interface with some of their uh, legacy systems or their current ERP, uh, but but it is about how quickly you can identify things and uh, and stop it uh, before it happens. But you know we we typically are going to be uh, very much working alongside our clients to notify them before we take a lot of action. Yeah, well that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So what else do you want to add? Well, um, I think, um, you know, it's, it, you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, how's this uh, COVID-19 impacting what we do? And, uh, you know, and about 75% of our clients are actually in the, uh, in, in the uh, you know, the necessary, you know, grocery and drugstore e-commerce business. So we've been, we've been very fortunate to be working with companies that, or not being uh, negatively affected by uh, COVID-19. Um, and uh, so, you know, th that's been very promising for us and uh, versus a lot of companies that we know are really struggling. And um, so we're, but we're working uh, furiously, you know, everybody's working from home and, uh, and that's worked out well. We haven't lost any productivity and, and people seem to be really working together as team. It's been a, it's a, been a, an amazing experience, and I think we've learned a lot about uh, you know how to communicate in a remote sense. So it's it's been a uh, an experience none of us are going to forget. But uh, we're going to come out of it. I think we're going to be very healthy as a result. Well, I have to agree with that. We're all um, doing the best we can, and I think it's uh, from our point of view, it's always it's good to have interesting work and being able to work with interesting people like yourself and. Uh, companies that are doing uh, really interesting things. PRGX, um, I've always loved the fact that I, I love how uh, people have found business opportunities in so many different niche areas and they're so important. And a lot of times you don't realize the scale. So one thing that you shine a light on today is the scale of, uh, of, of, the, um, of the business and the industry you're in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you talk about portions of $16 trillion worth of uh, spin, that's, that's scale. And so I'm always pleased to, to learn how people have uh, thought of ways to make money. Well, we're, uh, we're right here in Atlanta. So it's, uh, it's good to be here. And thank you, Larry, for everything you do and what tagged us for this community. Well, thanks, Ron. Ron, thanks so much for joining us today. And thanks to all of you listening. We'll be back soon with another edition of Tech Start. On behalf of TAG, we look forward to continuing to serve our tech community as we weather the COVID-19 together.